This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Since this video is about time management, I'm going to get straight to the point without wasting any time. But before you start doing any of the time management tasks that I will recommend in this video, you will need to figure out the interval window for the work tracking. In a professional context, this is called a sprint. If your team already follows sprints, each of your sprints already have a time window, most likely weekly, bi-weekly, or monthly. If that's the case, you're all set. If your team does not use sprints, then you can create your own and track it by yourself. Start by following a monthly sprint, which basically means you will start each month by doing a few task management things and end each month by doing some more task management things. You evaluate your performance each month, figure out pointers to improve and repeat the process again next month. So once you have your sprint length figured out, you can follow four important steps to ensure that you're making the best use of your time. The first is task decomposition. As a software engineer, the things you need to get done are usually very vague. If you try to tackle the entire task or project as a whole, you will not only find yourself wasting a lot of time trying various implementations that lead to dead ends, but this backtracking is also frustrating. So before you begin work, break down your tasks into a bunch of smaller subtasks. Let's pick a simple example and use it throughout the video so you can get a good sense of how you can manage your project. Let's say your task is to create an internal polling system for your team. This polling system will be used by your team to decide on various things like voting for a framework to use on a project, voting on a place to eat for a morale event, basically any times there is some multiple options and your team needs to vote on their choices. Okay, so you have a high level task, but you can't just say, okay, I'm gonna start building this. Spend some time thinking about the sub parts of this project. A good rule of thumb is to decompose your high level tasks into subtasks that each take roughly three days or less to finish. If a task takes longer than that, it needs to be broken down into further subtasks. But how do you decide how long something takes before actually even doing it? Well, that's the next step, estimation. As you decompose your task, you will need to make an educated estimation on how long it will likely take you to complete. If it's a project that is new to you, your estimations may be inaccurate, and that's okay. Even if you are wildly guessing, you should still estimate. Because when you finish a task, you'll also record how long it actually took you to complete the task. At that moment, three things can happen. You estimate it correctly, you thought it would take you way longer than it actually took you, or it took you way longer than you actually thought. If you estimate it correctly, great job. If you're off at the end of the sprint, you should spend time reflecting on why you were off. The goal here is to learn what you can do to improve your estimations and avoid doing things that throw you off. For example, let's say that one of your tasks for your polling system was to create a continuous integration pipeline so that any code changes in the future can automatically go through the build, test, and deployment processes. And you thought it would be relatively simple and take you a day to implement. However, it takes you three days. Figure out why. Why did you think that it was easy? Maybe you got stuck on something for one entire day. Maybe next time you should ask the moment you are stuck for one, two hours for help from someone else. Maybe you thought the pipeline was based on JSON and it used YAML instead and you had to pick up the new format. These are all great learnings. And the more you do this estimation reflection process, the better your anticipation becomes. And as a result, your estimations get very accurate. Task decomposition lets you figure out what exactly you need to do at a very granular level. Estimation lets you know exactly how long these tasks will take you to complete. In an ideal world, the amount of time you have and the amount of work you have to do are exactly the same. However, in a real world, you will always have more work compared to the amount of time you have. So even though you have your task decomposed and estimated, you will still need to prioritize them. Which takes me to step number three, prioritization. When we think about priority, we generally think of severity, as in low, medium, high. That works in, for general bucketing, but in terms of proper task and time management, every single one of your tasks should have a rank. Rank not only helps you prioritize your work, but also quickly visualize the dependency. For example, the task to create a deployment pipeline for your polling system cannot be rank one because you will need to essentially finish enough tasks to give you at least some code to deploy. A good idea is to start by ranking every task in intervals of 10. For example, the first task you do should be rank one, the second task should be rank 10, third should be rank 30, so on and so forth. That way, you have enough space to insert tasks in between or move them around. There is no hard and fast rule here. The idea is to have an ordering that describes priority as well as the dependency of your work. Okay, so you've decomposed your tasks, estimated them, and prioritized them. 
The only thing left to do is to organize them, which is step number four. Organization is the simplest step. Open your calendar and block out the times where you won't be able to work on these tasks. Meetings, lunch, workout, your personal and family time, vacation, times where you simply want to disconnect, dentist appointments, whatever else that is. Now start at the beginning of your sprint and start filling in the empty spaces, beginning with your highest ranked tasks and moving down the list. Every few tasks leave some buffer of free time so that you have time to adapt and adjust should things not go according to plan. And that's it. The day before beginning a new sprint, spend 30 minutes doing your decomposition, estimation, prioritization, and organization. Once you've done that, for the rest of the sprint, all you need to do is just follow the calendar and you don't have to spend a minute thinking about managing time because you've put in the effort in the beginning to do that. All you need to do is pick up a task that your calendar says on the times that your calendar says. The key takeaway here is that the best way to manage your time is by not trying to manage your time all the time. But do remember to reflect on what you did at the end of your sprint so that you can figure out the things that worked and the things that did not work. You want to learn and continually improve your process. That way your decomposition gets better, your estimations get better, your prioritization gets better, and your organization get better. And guess what happens when all four things align perfectly? You get the most out of your time. And that's what time management is. Obviously, this is a very simplified version of a sprint, one that has very little overhead and very easy to do, especially if you're starting out. However, there are many other techniques you can follow to get even more out of your time. But it would kind of be ironic to spend weeks or months of time learning about time management. That is why Skillshare is a great place to learn about things like time management because their classes are not only taught by amazing professionals, but they're also all about an hour in length. Skillshare is an online learning community for creative and curious people where millions come together to take the next step in their creative journey. They offer thousands of inspiring classes for lifelong learners on a variety of topics including web development, design, freelancing, music, communication, to name a few. There are classes for every skill level, whether you're a beginner or a pro. And one of the best things about classes on Skillshare is that they have no ads and, like I said before, they're just 60 minutes in length. So it's easy to fit them in your schedule even if you are a busy person. Speaking of time management, I highly recommend the class Organizing Your Life, Time Management by Taylor Bruno. Taylor is a software designer at Netflix, and in this class, she teaches you valuable skills to help you get things done even more efficiently. She also has companion classes to this where she teaches you tools like Asana, which you can use to manage your tasks and do all the steps I mentioned in this video. The other class I recommend is Productivity and Time Management Strategies for Goal Setting and Eliminating Distractions by Patrick Dang. Patrick has had a very successful career in sales in Silicon Valley and in his class, he dives into the philosophy behind effectively managing your time, like setting the right goals and habits and also gives you essential strategies on becoming hyper-focused to get more done in a limited amount of time. So if you're interested in developing your curiosity and growth mindset, head over to Skillshare. The first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link below will get a free one month trial of their premium membership. That's all for this video. Let me know in the comments below how you manage your time. I read every single comment. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button and for more content like this, subscribe to this channel and please hit the notification bell icon. If you want to reach out to me directly, hit me up on Instagram at engineering with Utsav. I do my best to respond to every single DM. I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.